All right, so thoughts, Lunar Nova. That's fine. Uh, this was different than, what, I can't start no, with no, this is no. fun. I have to start with something really gravitas here. Um, it's a lunchtime stream. It's uh, the refilling this time in this play. That's where I think a lot of the strategy is because maybe you don't want to refill because you are within three of something that you want, but what if something better comes out? Um, so that can be hugely beneficial or not beneficial. Um, so we've seen some differences there, but I think it's balanced enough that like there's enough of a difference where it could be hugely beneficial, which we saw um, in our game where when I'd refill, I'd get exactly the tile I wanted and it was crazy great. Um, but that didn't happen this time. I'd refill and I'd made myself further from the one that would have been way more beneficial than what came out. So. That is definitely a toss-up, um, so there's some randomness there, but mitigatable because you don't have to fill. Uh, and then that tension of what the other player is going to take, which we saw. That's right. where and you're like, ah, oh, you see, took my tile. I'm not at the point yet to where I'm focused on what she's doing and trying to not really hate draft, but, oh, I could take this tile, but I could also take this one, which might keep her... I'm having a hard enough time just focusing on my own game. I'm not sure you have to switch to that. That's a potential strategy where you could be like, okay, what does it look like you need? I'll make sure I grab that. But honestly, I think it's more beneficial to look at your own tableau. And given that it's uh, straight to once all your pieces is out, done, um, I was trying to create combos Same. where I wasn't scoring them right away, but then I was going to score like five. Because that way it looks like, oh, I don't have to worry. She's got plenty of things in the board. I know I'm one tile away from da 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 but you don't potentially. So you're kind of hiding how well you're doing in that way because otherwise it's it's clearly obvious. Right. And I, I just felt good that I was able to put two and three combos together mm -hmm. to where putting down two and three at a time is satisfying. It feels good. Um, but yeah, there, there is a fair bit of randomness in the order in which the tiles come up, but I don't feel, I mean, it's a 30 minute game, right? No, and I don't, for that it's fine. Yeah, I don't feel like you did better because of the tile layout. No. I feel like you did better because you did better. And I was worried about that last time because the draws were so good for me, but no, it wasn't that because again, this time, not so much. So that's right. totally a gamble on whether it's gonna be beneficial or not. I was worried about the fact that is there ever a strategy where it makes sense to go for the bigger number tile? Because these aren't points, these only are helping or, or moving you around the board. There's more flexibility here, but this may be completely not beneficial to you. So that seven isn't worth it if this is the only thing you're scoring now, you know, that's more like a one, right? Or a, yep. uh, you know, one of the lower number ones, a two here. So that's a little, I was worried about those numbers there and I'm like, well, clearly you just go for all the small numbers. But no, there were times in trying that strategy this time, I'm like, nope, that makes no sense. I have to grab that big number. Right. The, well, and the big number are technically easier to complete. Because Potentially. Right. And there are more goals and all of this. So you can chain. And I saw that where I was like, oh, this is all I need. And then I lay it and later I'm like, oh, that gave me so many options now. Like now I have the option to go there and score. When I was setting it up, I was throwing away these two. But no, actually, they become beneficial. So, yeah. So there you go. And like I said, solo to four player. So you have, I have played it four player. I will say that it was really hard to plan things uh, in the four player game because obviously the moon is going to move around so far uh, potentially that it becomes extremely tactical. Uh, I've enjoyed my plays at two player. Mm -hmm. Um, how would you compare? I uh, how would you compare it to habitats? It's just not habitats. Yeah, it, it's it's so different from habitats for me. Is it the same mechanism, a tile placement and adjacency scoring? Sure, but it's not habitats. It's it's uh, you know, in habitats, your the tiles come out and where you're pulling from your animal walks, and he can't go backwards, which I love. Um, and so it's you know, you have to think about where you want to face your animal. Is for me the big draw of habitats, that's where your strategy comes in. Here, 
the biggest strategy I can see is when to refill um, and then potentially if you're skipping over tiles uh, that another person needs, maybe not drafting them, but even just skipping them to delay their access to them. Um, so they're very different in how those mechanisms play out. I can see the inspiration, but they're very different games and I would want to own both. I, they're just not. Okay. They don't overlap. Yeah, and, and like Uwe said, it was inspired by it. Which is not, really right. nice of him to credit that because I don't see personally enough of an overlap there to say it's a, a co design, but that was really nice of him. Yeah. I mean, that's props, respect for that. So there you go. All right, so there is Lunar Nova uh, coming. Uh, apparently, it's quarter one, 2020 from Stronghold Games. A big thank you to uh, Spielweiss, who actually provided us with the review copy. Uh, during Spiel to be able to uh, to be able to stream this with you, it was it was a funny interaction. Went by the booth and and handed them my card and and they were like, oh, know who you are? Be like, you really want to you really want to show this off? And I was like, it's Uwe Rosenberg, right? And they said, yeah. I said, um, yeah, very curious. Check it out. You sure? <laughs> I was like, really? You only the, play High Frontier, what right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so no, I was like, no, we do lunchtime streams as well. Like, oh, okay, absolutely. Yeah. So I thought that was that was pretty funny, Michael over there at Spielweiss. So thank you to everybody over there, and thanks everybody for watching. Definitely appreciate it. If you guys liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. We are getting dangerously close to procuring an upgraded camera or an additional camera, as it were, PTZ camera when we hit 800 patrons, so consider supporting the show over on PledgeHC.com. You get access to the Slack channel, teaching notes, and a whole bunch of other perks. So if you enjoy being in the chat, if you are live now, you basically it's that, but perpetual over in the Slack channel, so check that out. Be back tomorrow for something a little bit different with a model, which also doubles as a card holder for your game playing adjacent stuff would be a good way to describe that. Yeah. So there you go. Thanks everybody for watching. I'm Edward. I'm Jess. You guys have a great day. Catch y'all tomorrow. Take care everybody.